And then secondly, if we're going to be ready for the harvest, we've got to be able to see and become spiritually hungry disciples. Yes. Thirst and hunger. We Most of us know that Jesus satisfies the thirsty soul. That message has been preached many times, many ways. But did you know that he also satisfies a disciple's hunger? Do I have any disciples in the house? I mean, we've got believers in Jesus, right? But you know what a disciple is? A disciple is somebody who actually reads the book and follows it, amen? And you're actually trying to live your life according to what this book says, disciple. And you see, the disciples, these guys, they did not know they were spiritually hungry. Just like the woman was all about natural water, for a while these disciples were all about physical food. They had went into town to get some food. You know, they had been to Taco Bell, okay? They went to Chick-fil-A. I, I don't know where, where they got their food at. But Jesus is talking to this woman, okay? And then the disciples come back from, you know, uh, Pizza Hut or wherever, and, and, and they totally missed that this woman is spiritually thirsty. John 4, 27 says, and at this point, I mean, right after he reveals himself, at that very point, here come the disciples. And they marveled that he talked with the woman. Huh. You see, that wasn't normal. That wasn't ordinary. That's right. And yet no one said, what do you seek her? What are you talking to her for? And then what happens is the lady goes off, the woman goes off back into town to get all the men of the city. And by the way, she that's what it actually says, the men of the city. She had, didn't have much influence with the women of the city. You see what I'm saying? But she had influence with the men apparently. And, and, and she was telling her testimony of what the Lord had done. And, and let me just go on and read here verse 31. It says, in the meantime, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But this would have been in modern days. They would have said, we picked you up a subway, Jesus. Here you go. Enjoy. But I want you to know what the Lord said. Jesus, he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. I have food to eat you don't know about. And therefore the disciples said one to another, has anybody brought him anything to eat? I mean, the disciples, they just simply did not get it. They didn't understand. They were still thinking about natural food, you know. You know, if it would have been in modern days, they would have said, did someone run over to Pan Express? Did you keep bringing him a, a Big Mac or a Whopper or what? I mean, he says he, he, he has anybody brought him anything to eat. But you see, I believe that there's something in here for you and for me. How are we ready to receive something from the Lord today? And there's something in here for us today because there is something that satisfies more than food. That's right. Come on now. Now, if you know who I am, and most of you know me pretty well, I almost always mention food in almost every sermon. I, I don't know why I do that. It just comes out. I, I was studying last year, and I, I preached on a verse that says, they ate their food with sincerity and gladness of heart. I'm always happy to eat. I love to eat. Amen. I'm grateful that the days of fasting are, are coming to an end. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, I mean, I, I love to eat, but I'm just here today to tell you that there's something that's greater. There's something more satisfying than even food. Come on. Amen. There's something that's more satisfying than sitting down over at Taste of Texas and having one of those unbelievable steaks over there. Hallelujah. 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 Something that satisfies more than food. Jesus said, I've got food to eat that you don't know anything about. What is that? Uh, all right. Doing the will of God. That's right. Finishing the work. For being a participant in the work. Uh, you know, doing God's will had filled Jesus with energy, right? Uh, I'm telling you that Jesus was there. You can see him he, you know, in, in his natural state as a human being. He actually got tired. It says he sat down. He was weary. But talking to this woman, woman had filled him with spiritual vigor and vitality and life. Amen. Jesus was pumped, all right? 
He, you know, he had told this woman about the living water. He knew that she had accepted it. She's going back into town. He knows what she's going to do. Tell everybody. He's just like, all right, the harvest is here. I, I, amen. amen. Now, I, you know, one of the things about modern day culture is that most of us didn't grow up on a farm. Did anybody grow up on a farm? Raise your hand. One, my wife did. Two, two, I didn't. I can tell you that. I did not grow up on a farm, but I started dating Shereen when she was still a kid at home, all right? <clears throat> and I remember I was about 17, and uh, I called her up. By the way, there was no cell phones in those days. Call her home phone. So, and she answered the phone. Yeah, that was one of those dial like this. Who remembers her? <laughs> And I, and I said, hey, hey Trin, come on, what are we going to do tonight? She's like, oh, I can't do anything tonight. I'm like, what do you mean? We did something every night. Well, 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 I have to help my mom and dad. Well, why? She said, because it's harvest time. My dad's out in the field. And my, my mom is out there helping her. I said, well, what are you doing? She says, I'm cooking dinner. I said, well, can't your mother cook dinner? This is a conversation that actually happened. Or I said, can't your mom do this? She said, no. It takes everybody to bring in the harvest. And see, sometimes when a pastor says, it's harvest time, hallelujah, people go, oh, praise God. Isn't that wonderful? But I should actually say, you know something? It's a season when we got to work hard than we've ever worked before. That's right. Now, wait a minute. Y'all were shouting a minute ago. What happened? <laughs> it's a time that we got to pray harder than we've ever worked praying before. It takes commitment. Amen. It takes excellence in ministry. It takes all of our energy and strength to get the harvest in. That's right. Amen. That corn doesn't just get into the grain elevator by itself. <laughs> The soybeans don't fall off and march their way into the grain bin. Hello? And so, not to be dissuaded, uh, uh, you know, by Jareen's cooking, I went out there and helped, all right? You know what I'm talking right. about? Uh, you know, I go out there and help, and so I'm telling you, it wasn't long. I mean, that first time I was up there during harvest, Vinny, my father, and future father in law at that time, uh, he says, Okay, I need you to do this. I mean, he just told me, Do this. Do, I mean, there was plenty of work to do during the harvest, all right? And, you know, and, and, uh, by the way, this was so long ago, it all kind of mixes in. And I don't remember the, if it was that year or another year or five years later, but somewhere down the line, I was there at harvest time again. And I remember as we got the last of the corn into the grain bin, all right? And, and I crawled up there and we looked in the grain bin is just completely filled with grain and Benny's like okay that's it the harvest is in and then we went to Fred's Cafe and had some had some coffee okay you gotta know small town America this is Worthington Minnesota alright and so I mean farmers and farmers hats and man you never met a bunch of farmers in such a good mood harvest was in the, they were all happy including my father-in-law why because the harvest had been brought in yeah, that's right. Amen. Now, I'll just have you know that there are some people in the church, some people in the kingdom of God that grow bored with stuff. What? That's true. They lose interest in the things of God. I'm going to tell you why they do that, Why? I want to tell you why. It's because they're more meal-minded than they are mission-minded. Hello? Right. Okay. You see, God didn't right. just call us in here to eat. God called us in here to serve. How many of you are with me? God called us here to bring in the harvest. Amen. And, now, and let me tell you something. As, as long as I'm your pastor, I'm going to do my very best every single Sunday to have a message that will feed your soul. I'm going to get beyond the mouth of the word. I'm going to bring some meat of the word. And I'm going to try to put some interesting flavor in there and, and try to spice it up and make it as palatable as possible. Amen. Amen. Because let me tell you something. All i got to really do is point to the Lord. Because the scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. 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 So, I'm going to see to the word of God. Amen. I'm going to do that. But I have a question. How long are you just going to come to eat? Uh, how long are you just going to come to eat? You see, people get bored. Is there anybody that's ever been bored with Jack in the Box, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, Taco Bueno, and Pando, Panda Express? Come. Do I have anybody that's ever felt that way? It's like, please. 
I just want a home cooked meal. I just want some of my mama's apple pie. Oh, come on. Why? Because just coming for the meal isn't enough. I'm just going to point you to the fact that there is a food that satisfies better than amen than, than, than just a natural food. Come on, and that is doing the will of God, participating in the mission, getting involved with somebody. That's right. Do you want joy? I'll tell you what joy is. Joy is praying for somebody day after day, week after week, trusting that they're going to come to Christ and you're witnessing to them and you're loving them and you're encouraging them. And let me tell you, when they finally open up and surrender their life to Jesus, you don't need a meal on that day. Why? Because you're completely filled with the love of God. It's so happy. It gives you energy. And it is not boring. It is the most most exciting thing in the world to be a part of a ministry that's touching lives. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. What happens is there comes a point in every Christian's life when you don't simply come to church to get. Now I hope when you're here you get a blessing. Yeah. I hope you get filled with the spirit of the Lord. I hope you receive some of the word of God into your spirit and into your soul. But let me tell you something. There's a moment when you start coming not for what you get, but for what you can give. You don't really need the pastor to encourage you, okay? Because you see, you've been in the word all week long, amen? You're already encouraged the moment you walk through the door. And you don't need the worship leader to pump you up. Because all the way here, you were praising God already and when you walk through the door, amen, you're ready to go. Hello? Amen. You come into church not looking for something to receive, but you're thinking, who can I bless today? Who am I going to pray for? Does God have me to give a word to somebody today? Oh, I'm just telling you today. God's looking for some Christians who are hungry enough to say, I'm going to eat that kind of food. Amen? Amen. 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 Who can you befriend? Who can you take to lunch? Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That's the mission. And I'll tell you something. The mission is not simply here at church. What you say? Are you with me today? Come on, now. Christianity and doing the mission, doing the will of God, being a witness, sharing your faith, living a life, and praying for people is not simply here at church. Amen? It's every day, all week long on your job. Everywhere you go, come on. The scripture says, as they went, they preached the word of God. Wherever you go, come on. Mercy and goodness is going to follow you. Come on. You're going to be there every day with a good word. Word. You're going to be there with the positive word, with the faith-filled word. With everything's crumbling at your, at your company, you're going to be the one that walks in and say, you know something, I think God will see us through this. It will be all right. Come on. We serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And let me pray. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You say, I'm not allowed to do that on my job. Oh, well. Amen. Go into the bathroom and pray. Then. Hello. And I'll tell you, you'll experience amazing joy. About that time when Jesus said, lift up your eyes and look upon the field for they're white already to harvest. Let me tell you what was happening at that time. Here comes that Samaritan lady with all of her Samaritan friends. And, and the disciples are going, seriously? The Samaritans are the hardest? Let me tell you something. Jesus came for everybody. That's right. Jesus loves everybody. Yes. And the harvest is now. Would you stand with me today? Amen. Amen.